Well, everything is a lot more fast paced, obviously, for being condensed all into three days instead of six weeks. But overall, it's a lot more focused on prototypes and how the mechanics of everything work along with the strategy of it. There's a lot of time to be more careful and think about everything, how everything will kind of interact together, what you want to be all in one system and whatnot. And it's a lot more careful and overall just less stressful, I'd say, in six weeks. It's a lot more spread out to do the work, while in three days everything is very fast paced even compared to the fast paced build season in general. So there's a lot of focus on getting things done really quickly, immediately doing one step and then moving on to the next ones, making sure that things are able to work in tandem and everything is getting done according to plan and there's not much downtime. Starting off the day, we were pretty far along. We had the shooter I guess concept out and it was working, it was able to shoot the balls pretty well and we had a belting system that was able to transfer them from the front of the robot to the shooter. So we started off at a pretty good point there and we ended up today so far having the intake of the robot on the actual robot almost transferring to the belting that transfers to the shooter and then we nailed down an angle for the shooter to shoot at. So we tested it a lot with a certain distance. We overcame a lot of challenges because initially we wanted to be really close up to the, the shooting zone, the target zone, so that we are able to consistently get a good shot and consistently make it in. We figured that when you're closer up to the goal, you're able to shoot a lot more accurately. There's less variables. So we started out doing that and the shooter was aimed nearly vertical. So this was pretty hard to dial in the angle. And when it came to it, we tried to put the intake on and it ended up being about 10 inches out of frame perimeter in our starting configuration, which wasn't great. So we decided that we would take a different approach and we would start from still a pretty consistent spot about at the initialization line so that we could set it up at a consistent starting position in Auton and it would be able to shoot consistently. So we ended up starting it from about that line, a little bit off when uh, we tested it most of the time and each time we tested it at a different position, it ended up making it in very consistently. I don't think we actually missed any shots today. I think we regularly got them into the inner port and I'd say about 10 to 20 percent in the outer port once we had figured out that it is better to shoot from the initialization initialization line so we definitely dialed in the shooter a lot and we are currently as we speak putting on the intake making sure that there is power running from the belting to the intake and we're able to transfer the power cells from the ground into our shooter and we are starting to prototype slash fabricate our climber and I guess iterating that a little bit and making sure that everything's going according to plan. So I guess starting off with regards to FRC in general and approaching game challenges, never just take one approach. It'll always help you out if you have the time to prototype more and come up with different solutions. So you don't stick to one idea and then just follow through with it and don't try anything else out. That can be very harmful at times if you're really trying to get one design to work. So it kind of messes with everything else as a whole and the packaging of everything is different and it's very difficult to put everything together in one simple machine that you really are just not able to with the physical constraints of the one thing that you're trying to hang on to. We kind of dealt with this with shooting from right up against our target zone. And it started out with just an, oh, this will probably be more accurate as a concept. And we stuck with that concept, even though the actual feasibility of it was not too likely. So 
once we kind of started trying something new out and we were able to, I guess, break beyond that initial design that we had stuck to, it was really easy to come up with a different strategy and make things work around it instead of trying to get this one thing that was pretty stubborn to work in the beginning. With regards to this game in specific, I'd say just keep in mind specifically the power cells and how they interact with each other. These game pieces are a little bit different from previous ones as they are pretty, I'd say, sticky when it comes to interacting with each other. So this can be a good thing sometimes when you're collecting them, or it can be bad when they're kind of stuck in your intake or in your hopper or what have you. So definitely keep that in mind and try really all scenarios. So whether it be collecting when there are, say, three to five balls in one small herd or maybe collecting something that's rolling away from you, maybe shooting from all different parts of the, the field. So just keep testing, making sure that everything works in different situations. You want to see that your design has the flexibility to work in multiple different scenarios so that when you get onto the field and you come to one of those specific scenarios, you're not screwed over and I guess struggling to make do with what you have and you know that you already planned for this and you are able to actually complete what you came here to do even though there were unexpected bumps in the road. I think as a whole, Infinite Recharge has its simple parts, but as time develops, it will become a lot, a lot more competitive. I think in Deep Space, it, it definitely seemed like at the very beginning, there were, there were teams that were still adjusting to the learning curve of getting in different game pieces and climbing and things like that. But in general, it was all pretty much around the same standard deviation. And it was a little bit better, worse at states and champs. But overall, it was similar gameplay from week one to week nine. As Infinite Recharge develops, I think there's going to be a lot of differing play styles, I'd say, as you keep going throughout the season. As you start in weeks one through maybe three, I'd say it's really just a focus on points. It seems like at earlier stages of robot design, you will probably be shooting some power cells, maybe climbing, and then very rarely getting to interact with the um, control panel. Sometimes probably doing the rotational, probably not very likely to get to the positional control unless you're high up in eliminations or at a very competitive regional. But as you keep going, I think you're going to be seeing teams that are achieving more ranking points per match. I'd say weeks one through three, I wouldn't see an average ranking score of maybe two to two and a half at most for the number one seed at the event. Whereas if you get to weeks three to six onto states and championships, I definitely think that teams are going to start achieving more of the ranking points with the climbing, leveling, and being able to achieve the end game points and actually getting to that score of uh, 49 power cells scored and then doing the control panel also. So I think it's definitely going to shift a lot from in the beginning of season where your main effort is just scoring the points and winning the match against the other alliance, whereas a lot later on you're going to be seeing a lot more teams that are, say, double and triple climbing during qualifications to get that ranking point and then focusing immensely on the power cells being played to get the threshold in order to uh, get the points from the control panel. So it definitely seems like there's going to be a, a massive shift in play style, especially between not only just beginning of season to the end of the season, but really from qualifications into end game, uh, or sorry, eliminations as you kind of progress. I think when you get later in the season, you'll probably have a lot of teams that are making a lot different decisions because of 
the difference in ranking points, which is not going to be seen earlier on in the competition. So maybe only focusing on climbs and mostly just cycling instead of trying to mess with the control panel at all. I think if you have three really good cyclers for power cells that can consistently hit inner port shots, I mean, you really are able to just keep cycling rather than waste any time on the control panel. So I think this game especially, the strategy that will be played in different matches will really just depend on the point in the season and what teams are doing to combat that and it really is just almost as much of a strategy type game as Power Up was where you can win or lose just based on the match strategy that you play. I think this year especially will be a lot different because of all the new no bag rules and it will be really interesting to see what teams decide to do. Maybe if you make two or three robots with all different strategies or mechanisms that may be able to win you matches earlier on in the season and switching that bot into seeing matches that will be won by a different type of meta later on in the season. So really looking forward to seeing that. Always keep iterating. The number one rule, I think, with this game especially, you're always going to want to try different solutions and make sure that you're thinking of everything. Even if you think your mechanism or strategy is good enough to play the game, you're always going to want to keep thinking of what's better. Always keep iterating. Always keep iterating. Always keep iterating. Always keep iterating. It's going right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm Abby. Uh, I'm going to show you the three different climber uh, options that we have. So, first, we got um, the, our first design was a, what's that called? It's kind of like, what would be a good description of it? Swinging arm. Swinging arm. Okay, and the next one's going to be called measuring tape. Is the swinging arm the rod thing or the? So robot. And then this is our thing, right? And then it's a hook that goes that. Lashed on the bar. Oh, just a big hook. Yeah. Just a well, big hook that was gonna flip onto. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Swinging on. Like, okay, we're gonna pull us up, and then. And then ah. the next one will be. What was the next one? Oh yes, it was. Can I just call it elevator? Telescoping. Telescoping. Telescoping, Tel telescoping arm. I like uh. that. <laughs> Not tell ya. So this one is you know you got the robot right, and you got this thing, and then you have a string connecting to the bottom, connected to a motor, and then you pull on the motor, and then this goes up. And then a winch to and then to a climb winch that detaches from this, connected to another motor that. Just pulls it down. Which means that it's a two motored power system. Correct. And the last one is a measuring tape. You've seen this done before. It's a bit flimsy and sketch, but it's really cool and it's very applicable and fits into our design very well. So. So this one, you have measuring tape, right? And you have the little thing coming out. And then you have rollers on both sides that are trying to move it out. And then it goes to, and it's at an angle. So it'll be like this. 
and then, oh, got an arrow. <laughs> got a hook on it. And so that's how it's going to end up. And then you got a roller here. And so this is going to roll it out. This is just chilling. And then it has a spring inside. And we all know how uh, measuring tapes work already. So it's going to go, and then it's just going to keep going, probably at a 10 degree angle. Yes, because that is really all that keeps it from flopping backwards and keeping the weight of this, like, not making it flop forward. <laughs> so those are kind of the three options we got. The pros of the swing arm is that it's probably the easiest. It would be the most centered out of all these. It would, And then the wench, it would be only one bugger. The only problem is that it's packaging, so we need a, our robot is like two to three feet tall. And then now we need a swing arm that's like two feet. So now add those two and we only got 48 to 60 feet. And we need 63 feet. So right now we're trying to figure that out. and. Trying to add height here. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the next one, telescoping arm. We really just want. It's really just that there's two motors, and we would have to put this on the side of the robot rather than mounting it to the the um, shooter. Uh, the measuring tape. This part is flimsy and could just come off. That's the biggest issue with that one. Yeah. So the spring-loaded discussion that people are having right now, does that go with the swinging arm, kind of? Yeah, correct. So we would have a wench. The only the reason why it's only one motor is because the wench would pull out a pin that's on, that's holding the spring, that's keeping the spring taut, right? So it's holding it down. And then once that pin is pulled, then it's going to shoot up. So once the... Once the motor goes like half a rotation, the pin will be pulled out and it'll just shoot up. And then the rest of the motor's spinniness will just pull itself. Dope. Yeah. These both are detaching arms. So once this goes out, it'll just, it's velcroed together. It'll just go away and there will be another motor down here that's giving it a bunch of uh, energy and strength to pull us up. Cool. Well, is that it? Can you do the telescoping arm in one motor? No, because there, it would this, get tangled. This has to be mounted on the side, yeah. not the center of gravity. So this would be like kind of having problems on the inside and not know how to, like, it would break basically. <laughs> And then, yeah, that's it. <laughs> now tell me about the double reverse four bar. Relevies. <laughs> 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 okay, that's it. Okay, good stuff. Damn it! There we go. Oh, I don't know how the song goes. Oh my goodness. What are we doing? I don't know. What are we doing? <laughs>